I filled three 400 milliliter glasses, one with regular tap water, one with ethanol from a hardware store. The stuff is usually used in certain fireplaces and one with a 50-50 mix by volume. I added food coloring to make it easier to see what happens, although the green stuff dies on me pretty quickly as you'll see. I then took a photo pretty much every day until the glasses were empty. I have also included the ambient temperature measurement each day. It was typically around 25 degrees Celsius. Let's see how it goes. So what are we showing here? The point of this is that despite water having a normal boiling point of 100 degrees and ethanol of 78 degrees, both of these substances evaporate even though the temperature never goes above 30. The ethanol took about 45 days to disappear. The mixture about 58. Finally, the tap water took more than 80 days. I wasn't there exactly when it disappeared, but you get the point. The reason this happens is that all molecules have a tendency to want to escape the liquid phase into the vapor phase. I think of the molecules as being trapped in the liquid and they are quite keen to get out. The liquids will absorb energy from their surroundings because it takes energy to escape into the vapor phase and the molecules will evaporate. Ethanol molecules have a greater tendency to escape compared to the water molecules and that is why the ethanol disappeared first. That is also why the ethanol has a lower boiling point but we'll talk about boiling in a moment we say that ethanol is more volatile than water. The way we measure this volatility is through something called vapor pressure. The definition of vapor pressure is the pressure exerted by a vapor in thermodynamic equilibrium with its condensed phase, in this case liquid, at a given temperature and in a closed system. If you wanted to measure vapor pressure and you closed off your liquid and simply stuck a pressure gauge onto it, you wouldn't get very far. That is because in this case you would not be measuring vapor pressure, you'd be measuring the pressure of the air that you trapped inside your container. Meaning that your gauge wouldn't really move and you'd measure zero gauge atmospheric pressure. So the first thing you want to do is get rid of all of that air. You do that either by attaching your system to a vacuum to eject the air or by heating the liquid and giving it time so that the vapor that forms displaces all of the air. This is also more likely to get rid of all the dissolved air in the liquid phase. Your best bet is to use both heating and a vacuum. Now you're free to play with the temperature of your system by heating and cooling. Vapor pressure increases with temperature. In other words, the reading I see on my gauge increases when I heat the system. In fact, if you plot your temperature and pressure measurements, you'll see that it increases exponentially with temperature. This exponential relationship is usually captured by an equation known as Antoine's equation. The nice thing about this equation is that you can describe the vapor pressure of all sorts of substances using only three parameters, A, B, and C. The crappy thing about Anton's equation is that if those parameters are reported in units that you aren't using, converting them can be a real pain in the ass. Remember, vapor pressure is always reported as absolute pressure, not gauge pressure. This is always the case when dealing with thermodynamics. A vapor pressure curve tells you the boiling point of a specific substance at a given pressure. Have a look. We say that regular atmospheric pressure at sea level is 101.3 kilopascals, a little over one bar. If we go across to the ethanol curve, we see we intersect at 78 degrees. If we go a little bit further to the water curve, we get to 100 degrees Celsius. Lo and behold, these are the boiling points of our two liquids. 
from this, it should be clear why we say that more volatile substances, those with higher vapor pressures, have lower boiling points. So liquids can evaporate even if they are below their boiling points, and that's because they have vapor pressure. While I was taking the photos around 25 degrees, the pr vapor pressure of the water was around 3 kilopascals, while the ethanol's vapor pressure was around 8. Boiling is simply the special condition reached when a liquid is heated enough so that its vapor pressure equals the atmospheric pressure to which it is exposed. Once it starts boiling, its temperature won't go any higher. I cannot make it have a higher vapor pressure than the atmosphere above it. As long as the top of the boiling container is open, I can't heat to a higher temperature than the boiling point at that pressure. That is why we have pressure cookers. By trapping the vapor while we cook, we build up pressure to higher than atmospheric pressure, causing the boiling point of the water to increase. Here's an important note. Everything I have just said is for pure substances. Pure water, pure ethanol. As soon as I start mixing things, like I did all recklessly with that green glass, we begin to see interactions between different substances, which causes the vapor pressure to do strange things. You need to check whether you are able to interpolate between these curves for your specific mixture. While the vapor pressure of a mixture does lie between these two curves, it depends on the relative amounts of each substance, and it isn't always proportional to these amounts. Boiling of mixtures is also different. There, the temperatures do change as I boil, and it is for this very reason that we are able to distill mixtures. But more on that another time.